For most of us, a computer is about email, Google, and the occasional Word document. But for those with an intimate understanding of a computer's innermost workings, it is a portal into government websites, company databases, and people's lives. Hackers are now more powerful, more mysterious than ever. And while most consider their mischief cybercrime, there is another side to these internet outlaws. Alison Vushnik gives us a rare look inside a hacker's world. We are anonymous. Their message is blunt and unapologetic. We are a force to be reckoned with. Anonymous has a goal that needs to be achieved. Nothing will stop us from achieving that certain goal. We will go after anyone that we feel needs to be taught a lesson. And they mean it. This is Anonymous, a secretive, leaderless hacker collective. But this anonymous member, granted 16 by 9, a rare interview. We are just as sick and tired of the corrupt, malicious system as the next person. The current democratic institutions are not only failing us, they're making our lives unbearable. They get our hopes up and tell us change is coming, then throw all our hopes and dreams in the dust. Anonymous represents a new kind of hacker, the activist. Dramatic, political, and very public, posting their videos on YouTube. But hacking existed long before Anonymous. The explosion of the internet brought the explosion of hacking and hacker culture, with its own rules, hierarchy, and code. And there are different kinds of hacking. Some are criminal, others political, and some actually hacking for good. The line is a really tough one to draw, but, you know, hacking is anyone. There's good hackers, there's bad hackers, there's hackers who are do what they do in order to find out vulnerabilities and weaknesses and applications and computer systems in order for us to be better protected. And then there's bad hackers who use it for, you know, making a name for themselves or uh, just making money. Regardless of motivation, all hacking relies on a powerful set of skills that both build and dismantle a game of cat and mouse where the stakes have never been higher and the rules are tested, yet still undefined. There is this battle between good and evil going on. This is a, a billion dollar plus industry in North America alone in terms of cyber crimes. You don't really need to know anything about hacking to be highly successful. There are different types of hackers doing different types of hacking. The most serious are cyber attacks, lifting credit card and personal information, extortion, stealing identities, and ruining lives. Then there are political hackers, attacking government websites. Even more frightening, deploying a computer virus inside an Iranian nuclear facility. These are not old school bank robbers. I mean, the biggest problem with bank robberies out there is that, you know, there's a lot of alar alarm bells, you have to break something, you know, people are shooting at you, where you can do a cyber attack, sit in your pajamas, uh, drinking uh, a coffee or a tea, and you're, you're, you know, the world is your oyster. And when there are crimes, companies hire Daniel Tobik and his cyber forensic firm, Digital Wizard, to investigate. Sometimes the bad guys are ahead, sometimes we're ahead, right? But it's, it's always a game. The game played from an undisclosed location where they track down cyber criminals from all over the world. They find a weakness in the system and they're able to penetrate. So the cost can be sometimes in the tens of thousands, but usually it's, again, depending on the size of the company, the infrastructure can go up as hundreds of thousands, and we've seen companies who spend millions of dollars to fix those kind of vulnerabilities. Companies and governments need to fix those vulnerabilities before they happen. And that's why they come to a place like this, a hacker convention. They come here to recruit and hire, making the hacker a hot commodity. I solve problems extremely quickly and I enjoy learning. It's my passion in life. And I think with that skill set, that would be valuable to anyone. At conventions like these, you'll find Canadian Karsten Johansson, a hacker for hire. Karsten always liked to figure out how stuff worked and then share it. Never a rule breaker, just someone smart, creative and capable. 
He's now hired by large corporations to test how secure their systems are. I'm really used to hearing uh, about how wonderful a company's uh, security group is and or their administrators. They're, they're always the best. They're always and there's no way you're going to get through this because we put too many controls in and blah, blah. What winds up happening is I do find a way in. It's uh, a very common issue that there are so many vulnerabilities that are out there. It's impossible to keep on top of all of them. Back to Anonymous, a hacker movement with a political purpose. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. All in the name of internet freedom, they defend breaking into secure systems, violating personal information, and bringing down massive servers. We don't want people to be scared of us, but we also want people to take us seriously. A message this anonymous member tried to get across when he agreed to be interviewed by 16 by 9. Maybe our videos are just like that. People aren't used to watching videos done by what the government calls a quote, alleged cyber terrorist group. He's right. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has issued warnings about anonymous and the FBI is tracking them. Another anonymous member agreed to explain the movement's goals to us. This time, it's Greg Hausch, an outed anonymous member. I don't think there's ever an endpoint to this. I, I, I think you kind of have to get that idea of justifying the illegal things out of your head because the idea that it's even illegal doesn't even come up. No one even cares. They're active in every country in the world. I mean, anonymous, it could be called a group, uh, but it's really non-existent. It's, Anyone who wants to use the name and wants to actually protest or do an action online under the umbrella can. Um, you know, the skill sets are actually these days relatively easy to pick up. In fact, there are hacking tutorials online where you can learn how to crack passwords, send a virus, or get access to systems. I'm anonymous if I choose to be. You're anonymous if you choose to be. Anyone is. Their actions can be illegal, and their politics push the limits. But Anonymous are turning the hacker into a force to be reckoned with. They claim to be the hidden face of the 99% who are sick and tired of their needs being ignored. Anonymous has targeted corporations, governments, banks, and in this year of the protest, joined occupied movements around the globe. Greg says it started out as a nuisance, pranks against various websites and businesses, just to get a laugh. Causing mayhem on the internet by randomly just, you know, messing with other websites. They were um, mischievous and having fun and doing whatever they wanted. It turned serious, a form of protest using computers in a new kind of war. At some point, you just have to say, we don't care about your laws because they make no sense. Some call it hacktivism, fighting for social justice by hitting people where it hurts most. You have to believe that civil disobedience has caused a lot of good in this world. I and mean, where would we be without the civil disobedience that brought us, you know, women's rights to vote, blacks' rights to vote? You know, I mean, th there's a common thread there you can find that, you know, the people who they've gone after have in some way, in Anonymous's mind, really deserved it. In 2008, Greg and some friends decided to take on the Church of Scientology when the church took an unflattering video off YouTube. To Greg and other anonymous members, that violated internet freedom. We thought we were going to troll Scientology for a week, too, you know, online. So we made this, this video that we thought was very ominous and scary, and we named it the Message to Scientology. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed. And uh, out of nowhere, CNN's playing the video on TV, and we're like, wait a minute, what did we do? The Church of Scientology didn't know what hit them. Attacking Scientology's website, amassing an online army with massive protests on the street, Anonymous was on the move. At that point, that was the first real gigantic acceptance of Anonymous as an idea, as a brand, as anything, uh, that went out to the public because all the news covered it. Uh, you know, it was everywhere. That got lots more people involved. The church calls them a hate group, claiming they received bomb, arson, and death threats, and providing 16 by 9 court documents 
showing that two other individuals were convicted and in prison for the hack and ordered to pay damages. But it didn't seem to slow Anonymous down. When they realized with the Church of Scientology aspect that all this notoriety, uh, because of the fact that it was a target that a lot of people agree with, that they found they actually got the support of general people and it hit, kept hitting the news every time they said anything. Next on 16 by 9, are they cyber criminals? You affected my life, you took my information online. Or champions for civil rights. By Anonymous and Null Security putting it out there, they're merely showing you that it's already out there. You just, you know, wouldn't listen. Natasha Maximovic is tech savvy, wireless, and willing to share her information online so she can enjoy her gadgets. I like playing video games. You know, I like reading books on my e-reader. She never expected reading a book or playing a game would lead to a real life story of hacking, fear, and information sabotage. That's the scary part, that someone else has my information. And that's the whole spiel of it. Just protect my information, end of story. and then. Things like this won't happen. What happened was an estimated 77 million Sony PlayStation users' private information was compromised. One million in Canada, including birth dates, addresses, and possibly credit card numbers. I have a lot of trust in, in Sony. You know, I trust their products, I trust the corporation. Why were you hacked? It was one of the biggest hacks credited to Anonymous the political activist group that uses computer blackmail to get its message out. The hack was allegedly in retaliation to Sony for breaching internet freedom. I don't know what their motives were. It doesn't matter to me. My information is supposed to be protected, period. Sony Canada declined to comment, but the hack cost Sony a reported $150 million worldwide, and the PlayStation Network remained offline for three weeks. Natasha has launched a $1 billion class action lawsuit against Sony for not protecting her information. I feel that all the people that are in this case, like, you just have that fear. It's a natural fear. So far, her identity has not been compromised and she remains a Sony customer, but she's vigilant. As for how she feels about Anonymous breaking in in the first place, she's protesting the protesters. You affected my life. You you know, took my information online, so you have that fear, that fear grows. Anonymous argues that by breaking into Sony, they actually did Natasha and millions of others a favor, bringing attention to holes in Sony security that outed Anonymous member Greg Housh says other criminals had probably found before. Then the real bad guys, the ones who do this for a living and make lots of money off of identity theft and breaking into your bank accounts, and they beat us to the punch by years, probably. We can yell that there's no security. We can yell that you should stop giving your personal information to all these companies, because by anonymous and all security putting it out there, they're really showing you that it's already out there. You just, you know, wouldn't listen. Anonymous isn't out to make friends. They're out for a fight. Almost everything that Anonymous does is criminal. At least what the government says is criminal. We cannot argue with this. We go from hacking, to leaking private information and many more. But we feel that in order to bring attention on an issue, we must do these things. We have to do something called civil disobedience. We may go far in a few places, but those acts are vital to our overall mission of defeating corruption and doing it for the lulz. This anonymous member who granted a rare interview to 16 by 9 makes no apologies. Karsten Johansson is in the business of trying to fortify security computer systems. They're forcing companies to be a little bit more transparent and very cautious about how they conduct their business because what anonymous is doing, they are bringing a lot of attention in, which is good, but I can't say it justifies it, it just works. And they are changing the game. What it has come to now is that literally if Anonymous said uh, X, Y, Z about this particular person, even if it's not true and they don't bother backing it up, people are listening and it can be used for blackmail very easily. And Anonymous may have the next person in their sights. Charged with the murder of her daughter, acquitted by a court of law, 
but guilty in the eyes of the movement. Some in our collective have been chattering about having our next target be Casey Anthony. The justification is that we've all had enough of her. We all know that she's guilty. Even though the jury made the mistake of setting her free. And now she's releasing video blogs, trying to get more attention. The impact of hacking from criminals cracking security systems to anonymous signature videos has become such a global epidemic that 2011 was declared the year of the hacker. Today, hacking is, for most, synonymous with lawbreaking and protest. But not all hacking is bad. Some hackers are at the forefront of technology and creativity. Others fighting to keep the bad guys at bay. Karsten is one of the good guys, making his living as what's called a tester, hired by Fortune 500 companies to see if hackers could break into their systems. Hacking used to be a very, very difficult thing to do, and it, and it was always associated with very smart people. It started decades ago at the Massachusetts Institute for Technology, MIT in Boston, where some of the brightest technical minds conjure up things most of us could never imagine. Where people were trying to figure out, well, this is a neat thing I've never seen before, and then trying to figure out everything they can about it. Jobs, Gates, Wozniak, all legends in the computer world, some say got their start by hacking. The results, a technical revolution, laptops, online video games, smartphones, and software. Software engineer John Van Alton thinks you'd be surprised by all the things you use every day thanks to a hacker. So many things that are becoming a, a, a ubiquitous part of our society, whether you talk about your iPhone or even the, your, your laptop, which you know, started off as you know, this general concept of a PC. Uh, you know, all these things, they started off as you know, some hacker's toy project. If you listen to music on a laptop, stream movies online, or unlock your iPhone so you can switch providers, that's because hackers figured it out first. And hacking culture, old and new, is driven by sharing. If a hacker has found a weakness or a solution, it gets posted for other hackers to see and use however they want. It was in the mid-90s when things started to shift. Companies started to operate online and there was money to be made breaking in, attracting a whole new breed of hacker called black hats, setting up the battle of good versus evil. You know, a hacker was, wasn't a bad term before. It was actually guys who had a, a little bit more knowledge than the average Joe, who knew how to work and program and how to manipulate a machine and, into doing wonderful things. Some hackers are still doing wonderful things. This is a room full of them. But they aren't out for world domination or even to cause a nuisance. They gather for a weekend to create, debate, and solve problems. To me, hackers get a bad rap, and it's totally unfair. It's called Random Hacks of Kindness, and they hold events all around the globe. Melanie Gorka is the Toronto event organizer. All of these hackers that are coming to Random Hacks of Kindness are all trying to solve problems for humanity. So um, we call it a, a Hacking for Humanity. Random Hacks of Kindness is a community of developers, uh, designers, subject matter experts, and technologists who get together for weekend-long code sprints or hackathons. Volunteers gather to hack or design software to help people. Everything from water quality testing to medical care in remote communities. Building apps, some programs that can literally save lives. A bunch of people getting together and trying to solve problems uh, to make life better for, for, for people uh, in a, on a volunteer basis. And this really fascinated me. And as well, one of the uh, things that attracted me to this event was the, that they were using open source software. Um, open source software is really amazing how uh, people can collaborate around the world. This weekend, John is working on a program to help identify safe drinking water using cell phone communication. These hackers work with big business like Google and Microsoft, using their brain power to solve problems. This weekend, there are more than 5,000 hackers taking part worldwide. It is a big army of hackers and do-gooders who just want to get out there and make a difference in their communities. It's impossible to know how big that hacker army is worldwide. Whether working for good or evil, they have a skill set that is in demand. For some driven by arrogance, others with a purpose. After all, some believe cyberspace is a hacker's world, and we're just visiting. As long as, you know, we're human, there's going to be hackers. 
because there's always going to be someone out there doing something that people don't agree with. And, you know, a, a lot of civil disobedience going forward is going to be done from the keyboard, not out in the streets getting hit with a fire hose.